All right, physics students, we're going to talk today about mathematical models for kinetic and gravitational potential energy. In other words, uh, how do we make equations? Our goal will be to have, by the end of these notes, that EK is equal to something, that we have some kind of expression for that, and that gravitational potential energy is equal to something. We have some expression for that. So here's what we need to remember uh, first before we can get there. Remember that work is equal to force applied over a distance, and that we can visualize that when we had like the force of a spring, for example, we had that straight line, and we found the area under that, and that got us our um, EE expression, right? One half kx squared. In general, if you've got some kind of force, you could think of the, that area right there is equal to work. And work is the thing that changes the energy situation, whether it's the, whether it's kinetic energy or gravitational potential energy or spring energy or whatever. Okay, so what if we have a force that is changing the motion of something? So in that case, that force times distance is going to change the kinetic energy. Right? So here, let's play with that side of the equation. So we know that force is equal to mass times acceleration. And um, if it is a constant force, then uh, That means that we have constant acceleration, and that means we can use kinematics equations. And one of the kinematics equations that we know is that Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2A times delta x. And the delta x and the distance here, that's just two ways of describing the same thing, like some distance that it's moved through. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this in my next line. I'm going to do a couple of things here. Some basic algebra. Subtract that over to the other side. And I'm also going to divide by 2. And then over here, what's left behind is A times, and instead of writing delta x, I'm just going to write it as D, so it matches up to what I have over here. So now look at what we got. We've got AD equals this, and I have an AD in this equation here. So I'm going to substitute this whole thing right here for the AD. And I think I'll write it as two separate fractions like that the same thing because math and then last I'm going to write well maybe second to last so this is one half m v final squared minus one half m v initial squared so if this is the change in kinetic energy and this is this thing with the final velocity minus this thing with the initial velocity, that means that EK must be equal to one-half mv squared. So there is part one of our goal uh, we have achieved. All right. Now what about with... Um, gravitational potential energy. Well, if the force 
that I have uh, here is the force of gravity, then here on this axis, instead of just putting a D, I might put um, Y here, right? Because it might be some, uh, it would be the direction that we care about something moving in when we're talking about the force of gravity is the up-down direction. So uh, we know that if we move something sideways, if I move this calculator, for example, from here to here, I didn't change its gravitational potential energy. It's at the same height. So that's why I'm calling this axis Y. Uh, so we do know that the force of gravity is constant, about 10 times the mass. So if we want to know how much work is uh, done here, well, that's easy. It's just a rectangle. So I could call this, let's say we moved it some height h. So change in eg is equal to 10 times mass times the change in height. And if this is delta eg, that means that our gravitational potential energy is just equal to 10 times mass times height. Now, you might, there is one little detail we need to talk about here. When you say the height, you might be wondering, well, the height measured from where? Like if we're talking about this calculator sitting on the table here, well, that's fine, but it's also like some distance above the floor. Like, so should I measure it from the floor, or maybe I'm up on the second floor, should I measure it from the first floor? Um, it doesn't matter what you choose your zero height to be, as long as you're consistent about what that zero height is throughout the problem that you're working. So, um, typically we're going to have a situation where there's like a position A and position B. So we're going to choose H equals zero at whatever the lowest point is. And we don't have to think about, well, there could be a point lower than that. It doesn't matter. Whatever the lower point is of the two that you're interested in, that's going to be your, uh, where your zero height is. All right, so that's part two of our goal. And so <clears throat> I'm going to summarize for you what we have um, our energy models now. We have the three. We knew that elastic energy is one-half kx squared. We already had that one. And now from today's notes, we're adding in these and what does that mean? Well, that means that when we make our little LOL diagrams and we end up with a qualitative conservation of energy equation, it means that now we can put in these, um, these expressions and we can actually solve some problems. So let me see if I have here... Oh, so many papers in this pile. Um, let me just keep, I'm, I'll make up a couple examples that are probably similar to some of the, um, the problems that you have done in, um, let's see, I guess it would be probably energy two and three, maybe just three. But when were the, the problems where we're making LOL diagrams anyway. So... Let's say we have a problem where I think we had one like this, where there was a block compressed on a spring. That's position A. And then position B. Uh, we could do right here. So if we made our little diagram. Um, at the beginning, well, what should be in the system? The spring and the block and the earth because of the gravitational field. And um, here, 
in situation A, the block is compressed against the spring. I'm going to call that the zero height right here because it never gets any lower than that. So that means at this lowest point, it doesn't have any EG because that would be zero. Um, and it is compressed against a spring, so there is EK, I mean EE rather. And it's not moving yet, so it doesn't have any kinetic energy. So it's all EE there. And then here, it's moving up. It has not yet reached its, high, its highest point, but it's definitely above H equals zero. So it has some EG, and it's also moving. It has some EK. So however you want to split up those four blocks is fine. I'm just going to do it that way. So our qualitative equation would just be EE here is equal to EG plus EK. But now I can actually use these things. To, oh, well, EE is 1 half KX squared, and uh, that would be equal to 10 MH plus 1 half MV squared. And then, you know, depending on the problem, I didn't give you any particular quantities here, but you would plug in the things that you know, cross your fingers, hope that there's only one thing that you don't know, and uh, solve for that thing. So this is the, the game that we can play now with these models. And that should do it for your notes.